today we're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and just focusing in on what our hope is. I called this section, Hope is Not Wishful Thinking. As always, just take some time to read the passage for yourself and familiarize yourself. Uh, look out for key ideas, put question marks of things that perhaps you don't understand. And what Paul is focusing in on in this section is hope. Saying we, do, we don't want to grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. And what is our hope? Well, it's based on the fact that we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. So the Thessalonians' hope was warped because they had a misunderstanding about what happens to those who die. Now in this section, Paul calls them those who have fallen asleep because he wants to make it clear that those who have fallen asleep, who he later calls the dead in Christ, he wants to show that death is not the end. It is uh, just like sleep. It will come to an end because of Jesus. So he mentions a few times this idea of falling asleep, linking that with death. But he also wants to know that the sleep is not the end. So just as Jesus rose again, so the dead in Christ will rise again. And he wrote this to inform uh, we who are still alive. So he's talking to um, Christians in the Thessalonian church who are still alive. And they were ignorant or uninformed with regard to the hope that is ours because of Jesus. If you read the letter as a whole, you'll see that they had got a whole lot of things right. But when it came to hope, they needed to be informed because they had areas in which they were still ignorant. So the gospel may have been ringing out from this church as we hear in chapter one. But with this specific area, they, they needed to be better informed. And Paul links this uh, re-information in the gospel that centers on our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says that those who have fallen asleep in him are going to come with Jesus one day. So the dead who are in Christ. So he's speaking about Christians who have died here. This is the hope that we have for Christians who have died. And our hope is sure because it is rooted in historical fact. Here is the fact on which our hope is rooted. Jesus died and rose again. That is the fact that holds Christianity together. If Jesus only died but didn't rise again, then as Paul says to the uh, Corinthians, then we are to be pitied above all people. But Jesus died and rose again. And so we can have sure hope that we who believe that Jesus will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in him. There was clearly also some ignorance or misunderstanding about uh, Jesus returning and people were wondering, well, maybe, maybe they had missed it. And so Paul corrects that. For he says, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. It will be an unmissable event. And when that happens, the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, those who have fallen asleep in him, who are with him now, this is talking about um, body sleep, not soul sleep. The souls of those who have died are with Jesus in heaven now. And then when he returns, their bodies will rise. So their resurrection bodies will be reunited with their souls and they will be with the Lord forever. And then he says, after that, we who are still alive, so those who are here on planet earth still when Jesus arrives we will be caught up together with them in the clouds now this idea of being caught up together it's important just not to be misinformed on so don't be ignorant now there's a lot of different thinking around this and some call this the rapture I don't think that's consistent with the whole of scripture I find it difficult to to reconcile the whole idea of the rapture and I, I think what 
Paul is talking about here, when we'll be caught up together with him in the clouds, is as dignitaries would arrive in town, they would go and meet the one who was who was coming, or the, the people of the town would go and meet that dignitary and escort him back into town. And I think that's what's going on here, where the dead in Christ and the alive in Christ will be caught up together with the Lord in the clouds. So this clouds is an idea of glory throughout the Bible. Um, clouds refers to to God's glory. If you think about the cloud and the tabernacle or the temple or the cloud leading them in the desert or the cloud at the Mount of Transfiguration. So we will meet the Lord in glory. And then this idea consistently in scripture is then they'll escort him back into town. And I think that's the idea here. We will join the Lord and we will come back with him to a renewed earth because that is our hope. Our hope isn't ultimately heaven. Our hope is a new heaven and a new earth the home of righteousness, that we will be with God forever. And that's how Paul ends this idea. He says, and so we will be with the Lord. That's the best news of all. We will be with the Lord forever. That's what we're looking forward to. If you can imagine a concept of heaven or eternity or the new creation in which you would be happy if you weren't with the Lord, then you haven't understood the gospel. Our great hope is that we will be with the Lord forever in a place with no more dying and no more crying, no more sickness, no more sin. We will be together, those who have fallen asleep in Jesus and those who are still alive will be with the Lord. We will meet him in the air and we'll be with the Lord forever. That is our great hope. And this is a hope that we are to encourage each other with. In New Testament letters, uh, one tool that's often worth looking out for is for the imperatives. An imperative is a verb with a command. And the imperative in this section is this encourage each other with these words. It's a command. Paul is saying, be informed. Don't be ignorant about what our hope is. Our hope is rooted in the fact that Jesus died and rose again. And so we will, when we die, or those who have died, will rise again. And we will, we who are, those who are still alive, will also be caught up together with the Lord in glory. And we will be with the Lord forever. And so the command is, take this truth and encourage each other with it. This passage starts with, ignorance and grief and hopelessness but it ends with understanding and encouragement uh, the death is not the end that's why paul calls it falling asleep all people will rise on the day when jesus returns we won't only rise but we'll be with the lord forever so if you are grieving about a christian loved one who has died we can know for sure that they are with Jesus now. As Jesus said to the thief on the cross next to him, today you will be with me in paradise. And we can know for sure that we will see them again. They will return with Jesus uh, when we all receive our resurrection bodies and we join our Lord Jesus on the renewed earth. And so Paul wants this correct understanding of the end times to be something that encourages us. Be encouraged. Because of Jesus, we have hope after death. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Well, as you dig in further, I pray that this would indeed be an encouragement to you, that you would rejoice in the truth of our great hope, of the eternity that has been secured for us because of Jesus. And I pray that you would seek to encourage others with these words. But I pray that this will also stir us, those who are still alive, that we would want to be speaking of this hope. And for those who are still ignorant or uninformed, that we would want them to get ready so that on this day, when the Lord himself comes down from heaven, when this loud command and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God sounds, that 
our loved ones will be among those who know and love Jesus, and so they too will be with the Lord forever. That's our great hope. Well, God bless as you dig in further.